My name is Simon Chan. I'm a director of East Asia, but also a council member of the Power Institute. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. This Asia is, um, this Asia stands for the Australian Institute of Asian Culture and Visual Arts. Um, it's part of the art year of New South Wales, and we support Asian exhibitions, but we also have a focus on education. And in that regard, we have collaborated with the China Study Center at University of Sydney, but also with um, the Power Institute to bring you this Sydney Asian art series. We are um, very, very fortunate to have Olivia Krushner to who bring us a lot of uh, very interesting speakers, um, scholars, academics, artists from you know, all over the world to give us their insights into their specialized area of Asian art. And so today we, for, for our series, we have um, a conversation and I will, it's between Patrick For Flores and two others, Pap Dewan and Samak but I will leave it to um, Olivier to um, introduce the speakers. Thank you and welcome again to Sydney Asian Art Series. Thanks so much, Simon. Um, and I'd like to again, thank our partners, the Archives of South Wales and especially Viz Asia, um, who Simon's representing tonight. Uh, my name is Olivier Krischer. Uh, I'm the convener of the Sydney Asian Art Series, which this year uh, comes under the theme of art and environment. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional uh, owners of the land on which I'm speaking from here at the University of Sydney, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and to pay my respects on behalf of all of us here uh, tonight or this afternoon to their elders past, present and emerging. Uh, I'd also like to extend that respect and acknowledgement to uh, First Nations and Indigenous peoples everywhere. So the theme this year, um, it's quite pertinent, I think, to, to, for this sort of acknowledgement because the theme this year is about how creative practices have represented, interpreted and shaped natural environments. Uh, we are wondering what it means to think of this region as a network of intimate in eco-political flows, for example, and what alternative spaces, what new myths or futures do our cultures and their histories make thinkable or memorable in the face of the ecological crises which seem to only increase and multiply um, month by month and which under which I think for the first time in, in living memory we can really say that we all live under um, with the ongoing COVID-19 situation. Each year we invite in the series four scholars um, and we interpret scholars to mean including uh, curators, artists, practitioners uh, and of course art historians to share their research in a public talk as well as a more intimate event. And that takes many forms. So tonight, um, our first speaker uh, in the series, Patrick Flores, who many of you will be very familiar with. Uh, he is uh, an art historian and very busy curator, who's professor of art history at the University of the Philippines and curator at the Vargas Museum, among many other roles. Um, and I gave a much fuller introduction uh, to Patrick's work in, before his talk last week. We were very fortunate. He uh, gave a public talk uh, under the title Nature is Material, Cite is Work, in which he introduced the work of leading Philippine artist Jun Yi, whose practices pioneered forms of sculpture, installation and environmental engagement through the use of indigenous materials. And this talk will be available, I believe, from tomorrow online, if all goes well. Um, so do check the Power Institute website uh, for that. Tonight, Patrick's in conversation with um, two amazing artists, Paptuan Swanakut and Samak Kosem, uh, whose practices each expand dimensions of this theme, art and environment. Uh, Patrick's working on an exhibition with Samak and Paptuan, um, with um, Samak and Paptuan that will open in Bangkok later this year. And this conversa conversation, I think, is um, a treat because it's a preview into some of that process and their current work. I'll briefly introduce each of these artists now and then hand over to Patrick. Uh, Paptuan trained as a mural painter with her late father, Aibun Swanakut, and, and led a team of painters that worked in, a Buddhist, in Buddhist temples throughout Thailand during the 1980s and 1990s. 
She was involved in the Women Artist Exhibition Tradisection in 1995 and has also been a key member of Women Manifesto. Um, and some of you may be familiar uh, with the archive project uh, regarding Women Manifesto's uh, pioneering and transnational projects uh, at Asia Art Archive in Hong Kong that's now online. Up to one relocated to Australia, lucky for us, in 1996 um, and completed her MVA degree at the Sydney College of the Arts, which is part of the University of Sydney, so is an alumnus of sorts. She's exhibited very widely in Australia, Thailand and internationally, um, and I can only mention a couple of, of those uh, exhibitions, such as the Biennale of Sydney in 2018, in 2012 rather, and the Bangkok Art Biennale in 2018. Um, but at the moment, her work is also on in a, a large scale exhibition called The National at the Art Gallery in South Wales. And I think we'll see some of that this evening in her presentation. So Mark Kusem, um, uh, a special welcome uh, to Samak who joins us uh, from Thailand uh, on Zoom this, this evening. He's based in Chiang Mai usually, but he's in an artist residency, I believe, south of Bangkok at the moment. He works in the field of anthropology and is researching uh, in Northern Thailand on transnational sexuality and the remaking of borders, bodies, as part of his PhD project. Since 2017, he's merged his social science research and his art practice to shape knowledge on queer studies and non-human subjects as portrayed through visual ethnography and assemblage art, again, some of which we'll see uh, this evening. So his project focuses on queer Muslims in Southern Thailand, uh, alongside the socio-cultural context of sheep and sea waves, which, which are weaved, woven into his art projects. So part of this project was actually in the first Bangkok Biennale. Before I hand over, just finally some housekeeping, please do post your questions in the Q&A window, which many of you will be familiar with. Patrick will lead the discussion and I'll join again uh, to moderate the questions afterwards. So over to you, Patrick. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Olivier, for that introduction. And thank you, Simon, uh, for the warm welcome. It is a pleasure to take part in this conversation between Pakta One and Samak. We will broadly talk about the exhibition, Leave It and Break No Hearts, uh, that the three of us have been uh, preparing for 100 Thonson Gallery in Bangkok for next year. It was meant to open last year, but I think you know the story. I now would like to read an excerpt uh, uh, from the catalog essay I wrote for this exhibition. It's, it's a brief excerpt. And I begin with, in Paktawan's uh, generous intuition, the works and the water had reached the plateau and leave it and break no hearts, begin by letting an active ambience inform them, inflecting their vital traces with elusive form that hovers and only slightly settles, perhaps precariously so that recognition of anything legible or easily intelligible barely touches its ground to finally govern so-called meaning or to ratify so-called tininess. The artist instead senses fragments of signs around and before her, those beyond and preceding her. She distances herself from a country that is mourning its monarch and achieves respite away from the statecraft and the grieving faithful. This she does not so much to forget or repress a lamented passage of a necessary king as perhaps to conjure an image proper to the memory of inevitable loss. In light of this loss is a recovered intimacy with her mother. Taptawan has lived and worked in Sydney for some time already and would visit her ailing mother in her homeland, Thailand in 2016. Taptawan's effort to be with her and at the same time to be freed from what, he, what she calls somber Bangkok announce a project that probes how death and periphery mediate an unconscious, as well as craft the procedures of parting, that mother and monarch play out alternately or transversely is but part of this process. In Samak's repertoire, video is an ethnographer's device. And being a student of the anthropological, he patiently attends to the nuances of everyday life to include both the remarkable and the uneventful. 
while in previous projects, his deep focus lingers on the particularities of agencies, whether sheep or wave or sex worker. Here in Ramadan nights, he ventures into a story, something not so remote from the transcripts of field work, only that he is able to work within a wider latitude in fleshing out character or scenario or action. His film proceeds from the enigmatic plot of a young woman walking into the rubber field behind her village early in the night. She had married a man who often left her alone in the house. This nocturnal habit of straying into the plantation, like some max sheep trespassing the human ambit, has made her strange and prone to the rebuke of villagers who have become skeptical, skeptical about her being a good Muslim woman and wife. At this point, common tropes between Paktawan and Samak surface, the non-human, the movement within the environment like the field and the forest, and agents who are made to fit within schemes and then slip away. Like the specter of history in Paktawan's monument, the narrative of Samak is set during Ramadan nights, the sacred if not liminal time for Muslims who fast and pray at the masjid. The woman is lured into the rubber field as if someone is calling her. She then gnaws away at the rubber tree. Samak recounts a traumatic episode in her childhood involving someone who had initiated sex with her. This would cause nightmares. The husband Rahim is not intimate with his wife and finds her in separate quarters. Strangely, he covers his head with a Muslim scarf and leaves the house early in the morning. He wears a white dress from his mother and he prays at home. He then adorns his face with makeup and puts on the hijab of his wife and reads the Quran verse on Lot at Sodom. I will now turn over to the screen to Paptawan and then to Samak who will introduce their projects for the exhibition. So we begin with you, Pop Thorne. Thank you, Patrick. Um, Salat Vika, and good evening. Thank you for having me here. It's great to be here. Uh, I'd like to um, continue um, the, this talk um, by talking about my two works. Um, both of which was developed and done and completed uh, in the year 2020. Um, as you know, 2020 is the year when COVID struck and it um, forced us to encapsulate in our own bubble, yet our mind and mental state covers the virtual sphere. Um, in that um, year in 2020, when um, everything was what people called unprecedented, um, New Year's Eve of uh, 2020 was the bushfire. No one has seen before. Um, earlier, my mother passed away in June in 2019. And I am compelled, I was compelled to produce these two work. And uh, I would say that um, they are, they belong to one another because of the year it's produced. So uh, I'd like to share the screen uh, of uh, my work. Uh, and uh, we look at a couple of slides of these two work and uh, before, uh, uh, before uh, leaving, um, sending over to Samak after this. Uh, let me begin with the latest work first. Um, as Olivia um, said that, uh, mentioned that um, there was uh, work at, at the National. This is the work, Real Glory, the Real Glory the way how, uh, you know, how you pronounce that. Um, it was um, the assemblage of um, two series, what I found in the internet. Um, 
one of which was the poster, propaganda poster during um, um, 19, in 1960 to, through to 19, late 1970s. And um, during my childhood, uh, I saw this poster everywhere. And uh, these two are one of the poster that I appropriate and put into the work real glory, the allegory. Um, the two work that I mentioned was developed in the land. And I now I acknowledge the um, people of Wango nation, uh, nation um, in which the studio and uh, my house are on. Uh, in the studio, the land of the studio uh, in Addison, Addison Road Community Center is not only um, the studio cluster or community. In the 70s, um, it was the parade ground and grill hall uh, in which people were trained, young men were trained um, to fight in war, and one of which was the Vietnam War in the 1970s. So um, that uh, was the beginning of how I uh, assembled this work. Back in Thailand, um, there were, um, it was um, the year when Thai youth movement start mobilize themselves into the street and high school children joined them. Uh, what you have seen in front of that face were a four sheet of uh, blank paper. It was to cover their identity and uh, it's um, to avoid the risk of um, authority to, you know, to, 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 to follow them and um, uh, perhaps um, uh, harass them into um, to not joining the, the, the protest. And um, this was the school uniform and I wore the same uniform 50 years back then when I, um, when I was, um, when I saw this poster. Back in 2016, um, there was, um, I was in the village of Hung uh, Samrit and um, it was four hours drive on the highway from Bangkok, but yet at 10, in the 10 kilometer parameter, there was no public transport. So I um, went to um, join the village and the school children were preparing uh, their dance um, to um, to commemorate a monument, the monument in which we are going to see now. Uh, this was situated in the Chung Samri, but it was built in 1982. Um, the monument for uh, commemorate the monument um, um, was um, de depicted the battle around a hundred years earlier in 1832 and where two women in the village led the, the local to fight uh, off their enemies, the enemy of Thai land from their from, um, neighboring country. Um, as I say, I did not, um, we did not have a tran uh, public transport and I ended up talking to Kinyato or Kinyato. She was blind, yet she managed to be, to, to go around in her house by herself on her own. Uh, having seen the world for 90 years, or uh, for 90 years, she told me the stories about the village. So I ended up talking to her and going to her play uh, Thai music with her. Then 
um, when in 2016 and uh, later, um, um, I went to an exhibition uh, by a friend recommendation. And um, that was the same time when I um, met my friend by chance, a uh, uh, his, historian. And he said that, Pattawan, do you know that battle may have never took place, taken place? And at least one of the two ladies, one of the two ladies uh, at the monument, monument uh, may not exist. Um, not long after that uh, incident, I felt um, I felt betrayed. I felt uh, I felt uh, for the school children. I felt uh, so there was mixed feeling, and in the exhibition around the corner, along the corridor around the corner, I was met by a screen showing stray sheep stra um, walking about uh, on rubbish heaps um, by the beach in the deep south of Thailand. That was work done by Samak Kosem in exhibition The Mesh. I felt compelled and I approached him and that is the beginning of the long um, collaboration work with Samak Antuna for this work at Live It and Break No Heart. So um, that's about it. And I'd like to hear um, um, Samak, what Samak has to say. Over to you, Samak. Thank you, Phi Pabtawan, or Pichang, I call her nicknames. Um, also, thank you that for me, even with also Vihata Wan and Patrick in that exhibition in Bangkok that let me come to develop to, uh, to work and more of my projects. Um, I, for for the, the project, actually the project that you, that Vihata Wan uh, mentions is actually my first um, role, like to bring the issue of my anthropological research and about art practice, you know. Um, First of all, I have to say that I, that time I've been like a year that I plan to find this topic to study about my PhD. And that moment I want to study about homosexuality in Islam. And I start to choose to South Thailand because where I was to study Islamic school, I, I learned a lot of Malayu language and also they, they got the textbook from the South. So I decided to go there as a hope that I can learn about how we can see and understand uh, homosexuality is there. But once they go there, it's quite difficult to do these issues. So I have to, well, I have to design on my research, like, because mm -hmm. the place is quite hard with the violence, you know, and uh, other conflicts. So I, I have to read and decide to understand the context first to look at the post-humanism idea. At that time, I see that there's a lot of sheep there, you know, like a stray dog you see in Thai society. So I wonder why sheep seem not fit in, you know. And later I can find out that the non-human can be considered as a queer, as an alternate, as an alienation. So um, that's the first uh, project that I choose to work on sheep. And later at the same time, I, I still run into process to understand queer disabilities. This is what, how we, when we ask everyone is no, homosexual Islam, but later I understand, you know, how I, how queer can be legitimate in Islam society. So that when I start with chiefs, that you see from these photos, and I still uh, continue on my practice with the, uh, like an anthropological field note. And that's why I, I developed this, that with Patrick to do in the back of Abinale. And this is my draft actually, before I translate that we talk with Patrick, how, you know, like it combined between the debate among art and also in anthropology, about anthologies and about the local knowledge. I mean, that's why I translate back on my few research back to the Malayu and show exhibition in that, in the Bangkok Binale. And this is like, I, I, I still keep in research in, uh, in like an intro by following the sheep, you know, the way I see them, the, how the local, perception to lead to the sheep. 
So I call over all this uh, about human, uh, non-human ethnography. So mostly anthropology work we call as an ethnography, but mostly we just only study human. But now I like that to be choose the human subject as like to understand the environmental like uh, I, uh, of this. So I not only about shooting the sheep, but I reach, I also talking about where the reason because I every time I go to the beach, there's a lot of women. And that many of them, you know, live there, you know, they sell food, um, it's their livelihood there, take their children to for relaxing. So I make a few videos and talk a little bit about wave as an environment and uh, to talk about gender as well. And also the third subject as a non-human, I choose the military checkpoint because of course you have to talk about the conflicts, you know, violence that is symbolic of state security. But the last one that actually later can really link to this when I want to study about queer, uh, it's about Chin. It's like a supernatural or ghost story that's been narrated in the South quite often. So that's why I, I bring these two, three of the subject to understand context and later to understand queer. Uh, that's actually um, some part of the idea that been developed into the work that show it our project at 100 Tons on Foundation that I will um, actually, the, not except from the videos, uh, Robadon Nights, that I also have to develop a few notes that with a photograph of the, my, during my time in Pondok or Islamic school, and also um, the objects of the sarong, like a Muslim man's uh, clothes that actually uh, remind back about um, like the time when I lived there and also related to our sexualities. Um, this is part of the non-human issue that I've been developed and also really talking a lot with the term about uh, a queer as well. So, but later, if to understand back why I choose the idea of post-humanism, and then I try to, well, like to reference back to the cultural script of Islam for example, like I bring this is my for my solo show this, uh, two years ago in Bangkok that I try to repainting the Islamic pen by shifting the position of uh, the actor. You know, normally we read human to be the center, and this the Islam uh, Islamic pen phenomenon about a uh, prophet. And then I I I move the ship the ship to be in the center of the story as actually he been the sacrifice of the story. So that's why I literally understand how we uh, un uh, understand a post humanism. And then also, I, I like just the way how I can uh, manage to uh, develop into my art project. And this is my uh, still image from uh, our videos. It just recently finished. Uh, Robert Nice. Uh, I am, because of COVID, actually, I have to remake, I have just have time to go to the South and shoot uh, in the last year. And uh, perhaps actually I can show uh, for to for, for everyone's a, a film, uh, one, one minute of the work. Actually, it's uh, the first time I show this video. This woman. Um, let me show the video here. Uh, I think Patrick already mentioned about some part of the story, and this is some part of the scene that relate about the rubber fields and rubber women. The, actually, this project it seems like I put all the problem that's happening that in the related to the sexualities and most of the issue that nobody talk when we're talking about the southern country. For example, like domestic violence, uh, sexual harassment, even just only women, but also about talk about homosexualities, and also you know as a context of rubber plantation, this collapse, and that's why I, I use this as a context to understand all those type of you know problem. It's if if you see uh, have a chance to see uh, our exhibition probably in November uh, in, in Bangkok, then you can realize that this movie. It actually like to, to like put everything all the problem that nobody mentioned and like uh, I don't know is that I want to let the audience to to interpret or also like um, analyze from the stream yes 
Okay, this is my presentation talk about my project. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Samak, and thank you, Paptawan. Uh, we now move on to the conversation. And for this conversation, I will ask Paptawan and Samak uh, questions uh, having to do with first the, the agency of the place. And then second, the response of, of uh, Paptawan and Samak to, to, to this place and to the liveliness of the place. And then finally, the trans translation of this relationship uh, between the artist and, and uh, the place uh, to, to an art project within an exhibition context. So let me start with, uh, with you, Papta uh, Wan. What, what drew you to uh, the Northeast? And uh, for some map, how did the South attract you? Okay. Um, uh, for me, what um, drew me to the Northeast, um, my father came from Ubon Ratchatami. Um, but um, that was um, not um, quite uh, straightforward like that. Uh, in 1980s, um, I worked in Nong Kai, which is uh, kind of the north um, the, uh, by the Mekong River. And I was there um, as an uh, English teacher um, to the um, Indo-Chinese refugee uh, coming across uh, from Mekong River. Um, it was uh, during that time when I knew um, or I get acquainted with uh, people. And I just uh, feel comfortable and feel that probably um, Probably um, where um, how I uh, how I how I sense that um, through my father, it was because uh, of the livelihood of um, design. So thank yes. you, Dr. Wan. So uh, Samak, your response to 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 the question about the South. Yeah, how yeah. Thank you. Actually. It's a good question that I uh, have to remind back why I why the South attached me. Um, uh, actually, I, before I go to the South for this project in 2017, before that, uh, two years ago, I been invited to be a guest lecturer uh, teaching anthropology uh, to the Songkhla University and Patani campus. That's why mm -hmm. I have to go back and forth between Chiang Mai and, and Patani, uh, teaching uh, uh, social science theories, anthropology to the student and also Islamic student as well. So the time I learned, I have been seeing a lot of uh, stories of my student, especially from the sheep, actually my student once used to ask me at the noodle shop, like, have you ever say a stray sheep? You know, <laughs> this is something come up with the idea when, um, when I, uh, I have been like collecting all those kind of southern contexts that I've been quite different from for me. But actually, uh, as people most like, Generalize that I'm a Muslim from uh, from Central or live in Chiang Mai, but like go to the South and there are most of Muslim majority that seem like they are quite fit in or in, I, I like insider or Kunai in Thai. But actually, you know, in terms of that, it's quite, uh, you know, there's a boundary. I, I'm also like outsider in terms of a different ethnic, you know, like I remember when I start to do my fields in the South about sheep, like even someone asked me like if I'm this side or other side, you know, is a meaning of if I'm Muslim or not Muslim. So this is quite important, and I think this is what I learned a lot about way how to um uh to talk to talk and visualize uh, my my project, and also in terms of the research that I have. I think that I take I plan to take a year then in 2017 to just understand you know, just the context there. Yeah. So this is what I start to um to go down to the south. Yes. I think that it's a, you know it it um, it's it's a good way to to uh, pick up uh, for the uh, for the for the next question, uh, Samak, about your response to that place, as mm. uh, I think both as an artist and also as an anthropologist. No, so uh, while you consider or you appreciate or acknowledge the the agency of the place as 
you know, as something that has its own history, that has its own uh, uh, energy or intensity. I was wondering how you as an artist uh, or anthropologist would uh, me mediate that mm. quite dense place, no? mm -hmm. uh, the South. And this is also the same question for, for Papto One later how she would mediate, I mean, uh, how she would uh, uh, come to terms with or try to locate herself in relation to, to, to that place. Uh, yeah, so sum up. Yes, I think, well, I think actually it's like you said, is that this, the place itself actually is, I'm not really familiar with at all. Um, well, I mean, um like like it's my first time ever that i used to work at you know work at leases along the border i love to listen to the border and it's only a place that uh someone say that you should not do this topic you know i i i in mean, anthropology most of the <laughs> my professor used to always say that you never been run away from the conflict and you also have to see see different actor you know the actors not only like in uh, about the place, but also about, as a person, you know, you have to meet the gatekeepers and everything. So that time is, I have, I know, I would like go back to my field research class and I have to learn, uh, think about what I have to manage about living here. So that's why, um, that's why I know that people keep asking uh, as an outsider. And that's why I, um, I decide to, to that's not like hiding, but, let's say like like a um, set of questions set of answer that i have to prepare like my research about she and also i interest about other story that people like um okay okay i think i when i'm talking i didn't realize what i can answer you <laughs> um yeah that's about what i actually try to understand what has come up to me you know like for the first time that she but then later i i feel like the sense of the you know, um, my professor used to tell me once that if you want to understand what is the important topic for the for one place, is it a, you just wait and see what has come to you often, like story of tin that's come to me every night at the tea shop, and also mm -hmm. some of the story about like about your know, well about some life of the queer people as well that come to talk to the Buddhist a professor that not only come from to the Islamic Muslim people. So this is something that I try to merge and, and, and I, 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 I let time, I have to involve the gene, the last issue in part of my project. Actually, I never plan. I just think about to do about study about sheep and then later at the same time, try to understand and talk with the queer people. But then later, for example, I found that the place like to talk about gene is a one example to to dialogue to talk in terms of queerness, um, talk about invisible like both invisible as queer and the gene, but genes can be exist in terms of narrative, but in part of the narrative of the queer, you know, it's something that is forbidden that you cannot talk in public at all, and this is something that I I get a sense you know of those people and uh, yeah from from what you question. Yeah, I think you you occupy a quite a unique place, uh, somehow mm -hmm. because you go into into that field as both as an artist and also as an anthropologist. So that also creates a different situation, no? and also a different way of uh, of mediating the the, the place mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. uh, like uh, acknowledging the tension between uh, you know the desire to be intimate with the place and also the idea that one is also an outsider. Huh? So I don't know if this tension, uh, uh, that you felt this tension, Papto One, when you, you were in that residency, yeah, in, in, in that place. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, it's very interesting to hear Samak, uh, his experience uh, in places. Um, uh, and the way he interact and research um, into um, his work, the free work, and also the body of um, artwork. Uh, for me, um, I came from the background of mural painter. 
And my father before before me was a mule painter, uh, but even he he was um, not only a mural painter or a traditionalist. He was a choreographer, dancer, a poet, um, short novel, a writer, and also, you know, among other things. Um, our childhood never been boring, uh, but uh, we moved a lot from rental spaces. Um, so, um, with my with that experience, um, it gave me um, a, a very um, um, a, a not non attached to place, but also I I get scared of places. I mean the places as as the environment and surrounding because every time it's kind of strange from um, where um, we came from. You know, earlier and then uh, uh, just before the time when I get familiar or get used to or we get settled, we move again. And uh, also the nature of the uh, mural painter, painter uh, we spend normally 10 to 12 months uh, uh, and the longest should be like 15 months and with project and we settled. Um, so we went to the north, we went to the south, we went to central Thailand. Um, and the, 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 the way how, um, how I do, um, deal with a mural painting project was because I was the, um, um, if you like, um, the leader, the master, um, I mean, uh, master, I did not mean master, but I create the master plan for the whole project. And the way in which I move ahead, just when the, the team uh, finished one project, I moved into, uh, ahead two months before the team follow. And uh, by the time when I arrived, um, that is a strange place. So immediately I talked to people. I started making friends with people. And this is the way in which I approached uh, in Samrit, Ban Samrit, uh, which is the village where I went in Pimai. Um, that um, uh, strangely, each encounter to the place bring in strange stories. And the story unfamiliar to me, uh, for instance, uh, I was in 2014, I was in Chiang Mai and I was um, uh, put up an exhibition um, in a residency and um, at, at, um, I was in the resi residency for 12 weeks. Um, at week eight, I put up a work or an exhibition and it's an installation and the way in which I dealt uh, with um, a shop owner who, you know, I, I, I wanted a reflexive uh, panel. So I went to the, um, the um, strangely, I went to um, um, mortar uh, where they sell film and I put film on top of a mirror. The moment when the lady came, arrived, she started telling me this, um, the incident in which her daughter was murdered. That was su such stories happened to me all the time when I started. It's probably the way, uh, because I was a stranger, not to be seen again, not to, meet, to be met again. So people started talking in, I have to say, in the, um, in the refugee camp in which I worked, I came across with different uh, with stories and stories never to be revealed again, but which was the secret or the um, atrocity in a marriage regime and all of that. Uh, so um, in, in Pimai, it was um, it was not unusual, or it it was not strange to me to hear 
uh, the story of uh, like in Bansam Rig, there was a house sunk into a big hole next to the factory. And this is a salt, uh, the factory who, uh, which extracts salt from the, the ground. And then uh, it was there long enough and then it sucked in the house. Whether it's um, when it was, uh, when it happened, whether it, ha it really happened, I don't know. So it's, thank you for that, Paptawan. It's so interesting that uh, your practice as a mural paint, painter could be, I mean, was, you know, like formative in your, in the way you uh, approach the, 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 the strangeness of a place and also the, the way you are able to become intimate, even for a moment with, uh, with, with strangers no? in, in that place. I think this idea of, uh, stories that cannot be told again. That's quite an interesting phrase. Stories that cannot be told again uh, complicates, no? that idea complicates this project of representation, no? how, how that thing can be represented in some form or some uh, uh, initiation. Which brings me to the, the, the final question about the translation of this uh, relationship with the place and of course your own subjectivity as a, an artist and as a scholar, as anthropologist in the case of, of Soma. So how this re relationship um, uh, would uh, inform the, the process of thinking about a, uh, something for an exhibition. So uh, uh, we are interested how you were able to uh, move from the experience with the place and then the uh, decisions, crucial decisions in how to uh, go about producing work uh, in relation to that experience and also in relation to another field, no? which is contemporary art in, in Bangkok. So that, that might be a, uh, an interesting uh, moment to reflect on uh, for, for this uh, session. So, uh, Samak, would you like to, to, to begin? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, about the translation, right? About the art project to what the process. And yeah. okay, I will actually, I, for the beginning, I, I surprised, I mean, I have to mention Jeff Kitiya, that person who come to my uh, research center and give a lecture about art. And this first time that I learned, I didn't you can see how powerful of this and how this can be impact to have the time of the communication. And later I not like suddenly quit my job at the research center, but I decided to leave Galilee and go to the South and then start to do my first documentary about sheep. And, mm -hmm. and also about learning about queer. Uh, but the thing I want to say that, um, I, I only think that I, because when I train as apologies, I only learn about the interviews, the participation, observation, but in art it can be, I, 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 I let it, I adopt, I learn and adopt it to be as my method because we know it, most of people borrow anthropological method for their research, but anthropology itself, it says, oh, we already have this kind of pattern, but later that I learned that I, I can borrow art, I can use art as part of my, like, a, like I practice part of my methodologies, mm -hmm. and it's quite helping a lot. Like if, like for example, when I when I um, about the project of queer Muslim, uh, because when not only I interview them, but when I a moment when I do a photograph, I can realize I'm about I learn some other meaning, uh, what the reaction, what the what the subject feeling, what is what is it cannot get from what from the interview at all not only from the process of work, but in the, in the process of exhibition as well, like some of the subject who, I mean, I can realize that, you know, the reaction of the audience, how when they see look at those queer uh, visually and how I can sense that uh, sometimes I can see that how even the subject who, who, who came to my play, who have exhibition and sense that they then feel uncomfortable, even like they cannot, 
they, they prefer not to be involved in their sale of queer Muslim related to the, any, any religion symbolic. So I like to say that not only percent of working, percent of exhibition, and also like later on when it's the, the, if the work is been uh, installing or exhibit, it's, I can't tell a lot like all those like ideas, all those like information that is never been fully finished. So that's why, if you remember when we worked a project on uh, about sex worker, that in northern Thailand, uh, that's is a, you can say that most of my work is same like, it's not complete, you know. It's I, I actually I leave it as like like I want to. This is when I can go back and read it again, and this is not like a complete work. So some some say that it will be like um you know um, I don't have like the aesthetic of the work and it's a kind of the work that seemed like not finishing it, yes, it, I can admit, I accept that in a way because, because I, it's this a process and I'm keep thinking and also I, I also experience how if this come together and how this will be explained for, for me back to my project. Yeah, so um, this is what I'm saying. Like I, 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 over, late, I, I was going to say that the, 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 my practice, how to translate to the work is, is still in, my, in the process. I, I, I love to see that and then I, I like it how it's still not like that like audience can also cook it later in their own best their, like experience. You know, like if I don't want to be like saying it's a conclusion. So mm -hmm. it's like if the audience see the work in it's like if in my whatever from my few notes or the videos that is they can also con like think more further, you know, from what I've been like showing all those like a process. As I also in myself that part of this, you know, like each year I develop the work, like the one we show at the at the workers. It's also like I can. It's part of my research methodology. It's part of part of my field research. Actually, it's not a part of. Well, I don't know. I I have to finalize the project in that way. But I, this is what I've been proceeding to learn to in this part of you know like part of the sales transformation, for example, that I show with your galleries. So um, this is what I what I you probably not not uh, people disagree with this, but it's just like you know I, as my train as anthropologist and I now I come across to this, uh, in art. So this is what I I on my own uh, to uh, to discuss with you know uh, mm -hmm. even I probably don't know much if what in art been uh, what been argument what been discussed, but I just hope this is something a cross discipline that I I like to 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 present to everyone, yes. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting uh, relationship somehow, between uh, field work and artwork, no? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, yeah, something to, to think about. So, mm -hmm. Dr. Wan, you. your response to this, um, to this question on translation into a, into a work, no? Into a work uh, for an exhibition. Um, for this exhibition, um, as I show um, in my last um, two images, uh, it was Pablo. Um, it was um, uh, what looks like a conventional, traditional um, work on um, work on uh, panel. Um, I intend to assemble it into uh, not quite object, but a kind of actor in the scene. I, I am a storyteller and um, the painting for me um, also a vessel to ca which carry message and I um, manipulate it or I put it into the way in which that it become an actor in my stories, um, if you like. Um, or I like to see it that way. Um, having said that, uh, my work uh, has been um, um, ha has been um, at least I, I explore the way how I um, communicate by uh, um, uh, putting it into a process of how I. Um, how I interpret or how I um, deal or, um, or in, 
in, talak, uh, in, 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 in conversation with the material, whether it's um, uh, stories, whether it's uh, uh, something that uh, I um, that I was challenged by, say like the the surrounding, the environment, and the uh, um, um, the conflict. Um, so that is, um, you know, for um, just to say a few. Um, so my work uh, moved on from one um, approach or one um, stance to another. Mm -hmm. That is the closest. Of one. And I think in the in the exhibition, chapter one, they will see some kind of uh, like a performative element now in relation to how the painting will be um, arranged, right? There, there, remember very well that we were quite specific uh, with regard to how the paintings would be placed in, within the gallery. Yes. Um, um, I uh, plan to put all this tableau up into a kind of stadium and uh, which stack up and not uh, just to put a stadium, but um, in each element um, of the of the section mm -hmm. and of the material of the of the object, the painting, if you like, it's become non painting, mm -hmm. it's become an active, um, active um, um, element. Element, yeah. And uh, it will be put alongside uh, uh, another, um, which I haven't shown, but um, another installation, which is called When um, the Water Reaches Plata. Mm -hmm. um, it will be a floor, mm -hmm. a floor uh, installation, but um, was, um, um, was projecting, um, projecting on the view of um, the view looking up to the sky. So it's, it's have that kind of dramatic movement um, um, between the ground and the sky. Mm. That's interesting how you talk about Papta Wan, uh, about uh, uh, non-painting, which I think relates well with the, the non-monument. Uh, because the because you 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 said that uh, the that that story might not really have happened. No? So it's an interesting uh, relationship between you know how history is you know is is told and how it is also uh, not confirmed by uh, certain uh, sources. No? So maybe before we open the question to to the audience, uh, I'd like to. Uh, to know about the conversations you've had, both of you, because uh, I know that uh, this project has uh, inspired both of you to uh, intensely correspond. <laughs> so uh, I, 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 of course, I, I, I was not privy to those conversations. I, uh, I was wondering what you talked about, uh, I mean, in this back and forth uh, uh, through uh, email, I think, yeah? I think this is also formative, uh, quite uh, important in the in the formation of the of the project. Yeah. So Samak. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Actually, at the beginning, we write we write a letter, like email, actually, to share what we have been, you know, experiencing some question, just a moment or something remind up remind to us about well, what what interesting we like to share, you know, because. Well, it's a as is like a collaboration, but since that I still like we we try to merge our issues and and also like I feel like I'm not sure is it already enough or definition of this collaboration. I'm quite new of this term, so uh, that's why we I think the first way before the our our experience been extend, so we start to write the the letters, the email, sharing what you know what people have to want like. Uh, something to to share to me and what it, you know is because 
we we both have quite different generation you know this is something that um i like it's interesting that i what i perspective what i'm seeing as like um as like what i be learn as anthropology as well and then this has come up actually from the first uh the idea is come from the first email i got from people one once i don't know who she is you know uh wrote it to me about awesome want to talk and into and i think people the one you can mention that as well and later after we um we extended so i at least quite long for more a year so i decided that i actually i like to write about her life so i actually interview her most of every week to um to learn about her life you know as a policy we call it like a life history So is there something that I can also learn from 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 her as a John as the, you know she have a lot of experience and I I also love to love paintings as well even I have a chance to learn in the Islamic school so what is thing that I have really you know at mind and 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 also that back to the question uh to you we also discussed that that how this exhibition as well is the place that I also want to interact. Want to also reflect back, like if I talk, you know, it's something because it's a process. Like uh, you can remember that we talk about my painting, <laughs> and this is something like I I mentioned that, you know, sometimes I I want to show how my is when when I do this work, I I can when with 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 that I know that this work is gonna be show with the p a p t e one who is a master of the painting. This is something that I like to to show my vulnerable. You know how this. You know, I think most of the artists show what's the base of your work. You know, I want to show is that how what I feel this reflect back from the master of the i n s t r u m e n t painting to see, you know, what 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 my feeling in terms of what I react back to that. So this is something I just exploring and in terms of being as a you know as an artist and also anthropologist that sometimes we never been sure that kind of sense that that's what I. This is what you know. Is like I feel like this is something I can. I want to experience. I want to explore thing as possible as I have a chance. You know, like you have to curate that you open so many kind of thing. That's that's why I, I I share this to you. Yeah, and also the story as well about the objects and thing that I I been learn from part of one learn about religious cosmology. That why I like to go back talking in Islam by itself. What I can. You know, share in the what the parallel dialogue and how this, you know, what I can bring and to to and and come to to this c a r p e t s That's why I come up with with the carpet. That I come up with the the s a r o n You know, this is something that what I like to you know try to have this only chance. I don't know, just try to talk to dialogue with part of one. Most of the idea, the concept that I learned from her. Yes. Thank you, Sir Mark. So, part of one. Um, yes, one can learn uh, too much from each other, uh, but uh, you know, one should not forget that I don't know s a m a k either. Mm. Um, we, I, I, we were lucky. We had, um, we were. Um, I was in Bangkok, and we were in the same, you know, event. And you too, Patrick, at uh, for Bangkok Art Biennale. Um, we spent some time. We went to exhibition. Um, we had. Lunch together, and um, I learned from s a m a k that way too. Mm. Um, we went to exhibition, and um, you know, during the exhibition, we did not have to talk. This mean mm -hmm. exhibition of other work of uh, work outside our own practice. Um, we started to. To relate through the way we respond to the work, it doesn't have to be the same. But this is, I think, it's very important um, for me, if not for everyone, that uh, we relate to one another the way they relate to the world. And it's important to me because um, um, I do not really feel 
that I am always insider because of the practice that, you know, I did not go to art school. I did not come from the theory. I do not have methodology. Um, forget about collaboration because I don't know what it means either. Um, but uh, the way we relate to the world is uh, what attracted me, uh, what Samak had. Yeah, this is um, what, I, what I can say about that. Um, we also, um, um, during the long email process, um, we also learn uh, when um, and follow that model by, okay, Samak, what did you see? What uh, movie? And we share the movie. Mm. go to each other and I said oh I went to see this exhibition and I want to share with you um, so that uh, has um, developed into a, a, a deeper and in, more intense and a deeper understanding of um, at least um, how you suffer how people struggle how people feel and that is, um, I think I learned from Samak a lot. Mm. I think that's a good way to, uh, to, to take a pause from this conversation, Papta Wan and Samak, as we take questions from the floor. So uh, Olivier, are you ready with those questions? Maybe you can join us in the room now. Thanks, Patrick, and thank you, Samak and Papduan. I'm conscious of time, so I'm just going to jump straight in. Uh, Samak, I see that you've tried to, um, to, to deal with, with one question, so I'll get to that straight away. Um, just a, a specific question where somebody asks, your method of following sheep, have you, have you thought about following other animals in other contexts, perhaps, <laughs> if the project moves? Um, but I guess to expand that, like, are you, are you seeing a way to, you know, is, is this way of working with elements of the natural environment something that you see broadening in your practice? Okay. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, but actually, um, uh, well, it's, when I'm following the sheep, it's actually the, my first, you know, first periods of my field research. I, I, I think like kind of like funny way when every time anthropologists go to the new village, you know, every time the first thing they have to do is to find the haze mess, the haze villagers, you know, to show where is this a place in in this new community. And you have to do the real field research. So once I think that I will go study about sheep, so why would I just follow them, you know, instead of ask human to people to show where is the place in that communities. So they follow them not only um, to learn that uh, where is the place, you know, they, fought, they took me to see the school, to see the graveyards, or the Czech foy, the moss, and everywhere, even back to their, their house, that who that find out they're actually not stray. And well, later I can learn that the animal also have the space perception, you know, they, they learn as a human how to manage this place. This is what I confirmly to, to say because um, because they have other other part of the space that other sheep from different communities that not come across. But also later understanding the, the interaction between understand of well human cultures there, for example, the relationship between Muslim and Buddhist Buddhists there, you know, through the animal, because there will be a lot of you know, conflict, like, like a fight between sheep and the dogs. And the dogs normally don't come across to the Muslim land at all. So this is what I've been, always been kind of like concluded that when I have to tell some newcomer to the South, like, if you don't know, you get lost in somewhere in the, in this uh, city, you just look at the animal beside the street. You know, if you see the dog, you can, you can tell this to most like a Buddhist community because the sheep not come across and also the dog not going, you know, they cannot be there in the Muslim community as well. They, there's something like related to the human and animal that's mm -hmm. relation and affect them quite, quite well. And yeah, I think if I have to choose, so I have to choose also because they have many animals, right? And why I choose sheep because, you know, in Islam, Islam society, they always have not only sheep, but goats and also cow, you know? So, but sheep has become like a, the the you know the the last class I mean the, the lowest class of the animals 
discipline hierarchy as well, according to the religion's kind of activity that you know define them. So I, if I for my project, yeah, I have to, that's why I follow them. So thank you for the question. Very really interesting. Um, that that's quite a rich answer, and I I'd love to create you know, ask some parallels with some of your earlier work, Patuan, which I know also features animals, um, you know, in a quite a symbolic way. But I, I think the last question that we have here is is to the whole panel, and it's quite a rich one. So I'm going to just read what's here, um, and it it really engages. Um, both the artists and also yourself, Patrick. Mm -hmm. So two common themes that um, this uh, member of our audience finds in your and the two artists' work are anxiety of place and also a sense of longing for something or someone no longer there. Mm -hmm. So um, she asks in your work, do you or did you consciously seek to resolve these issues? Um, and also wonders, Patrick, what your view of this kind of parallel is between um, Paptuan and Samak's works. But perhaps first to to Paptuan, um, what do you make of this, this observation for uh, potentially a longing of something or someone no longer there? Um, is that a question for me? Hmm. Um, I think, yeah. think Paptuan, the question is about uh, uh, the commonality between uh, what interests Samak and also what interests you. Uh, for this exhibition, and how do you see uh, these uh, commonalities, uh, affinities? Uh, do you welcome the differences, or do you seek to resolve them? I think that's the tenor of the question. Um, yeah, the commonality is. Um, yeah, I, I I like to think it uh, that that is something in common, but actually, as we learn each other, and this is still in progress, um, I I don't think it's uh, relevant anymore about uh, what um, you know what um, we see in common. Mm. The thing is um, whether how we deal with it, how we deal with the subject, how we deal with the um, with with, um, with this probe in our hands, um, as you know, if you like, as as a uh, as subject, mm. as the subject subjectivity or. Um, so when I think about it that way, I don't see the difference is um, a problem. Mm -hmm. so, you know, maybe my 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 answer is too abstract, but uh, I feel that. And Samak, would you like to also respond before Patrick? Um... Yeah, um, the questions about the, I'm sorry, uh, for the question of email there, right? Mm, yeah. That one? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for my understanding, um, well, to talk the subject both with animal and also queer, maybe the talking about queer, probably more clear to talk about this. Uh, but actually, it's quite right. I mean, remind me that I didn't really talk much that, well, when, when I asked about looking for queer, uh, when society, when I asked people in general about, is that is Muslim or Islam in the in the society or not? Because they always say no. They also invisible. They never been like never been like in this kind of definition. If you talk about those the definition as well, that's why I later I, the, my purpose is just to just to find it how this queer is legitimate in the Islam society. At least they not about this. They've been right to be there, but at least they not been marginalized, just hiding under the carpet. But also when I were do research there, there's not many, not many queer that I can talk as well because they have to move. They go across, they go, they make, they go to Bangkok, go to Hat Yai, the place city that they can show their gender identities when one day they, they, they feel like they, they need to. But later, you know, they come back because of the family issues and other things, they come back to face the situation as well. So it's hard to say how they can part of longing, uh, you know, this both way, you know, um, to see that they, they have to find it, the way to negotiate, you know, and how to, you know, to 
to still you know live as they want to and also how to um to to live that some to live their life that that as is no any you know how to to like to to find to solve this problem it's it's, it's difficult to say is it i cannot solve this problem at all but just i just hope that i can find a way to that my project can interact more in terms of you know like to 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 public talk to to just to be a talk to be to be mentioned for example that like, um actually i have a small uh a small project with uh patrick uh student carlos that i want to um to find how the young queer people you know to to be mentioned and told by the small research to look to the school policy related to the sexual harassment among the gay people I mean, among those young men who've been affected from that way and then they can rely to talk this is a hard problem not only we're talking about homosexuality by itself but what does it like affect to and this can hopefully it can be the thing the issue that can find a common con like people to to discuss about the topic so thanks for the question this really uh, remind me to discuss more about this yeah it's an interesting question email the this uh, relationship between anxiety and also melancholy mm -hmm. and uh, definitely there uh, there's a conversation between uh, Papta one and Samad, but uh, it's not something that we we force or we we try to resolve if there are differences or if there are, I mean, uh, uh, rough edges. I think uh, these are all uh, part of part of the process. I mean, maybe one way to to answer the question is to toss around some some elements that. Uh, inform the project. I, I sense a strong uh, presence of the woman. Uh, the gender is very strong in, in, in the work of, uh, of, of Papta Wan and queerness is also very much marked in, 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 in the project of, uh, of Samak. There is also the element of ethnographic work in, in the case of Samak and memory work in the case of, uh, of Papta One. So I think these are interesting uh, points of conversation. There is also the element of religion as a structure, organized and uh, codified with its hierarchies. But there is also a more unpredictable folklore uh, that is prone to, let us say, error or misunderstanding or misinterpretation or mistranslation. I, I'm, also, I'm also drawn to that. And uh, finally, there is the element of the migrant, the migrant and also the mythic. And so I think these elements, when you choreograph as a curator, uh, you don't have to resolve, no? You just uh, create a situation for, for them to, to play out and to uh, inflect each other and also to maybe transform each other too. Mm. Um, I'll actually invite Samak or Paptuan just briefly, because I'm conscious of time, but would you like to respond um, or add to Patrick's comments <laughs> on those observations? I'm wondering what you make of this kind of interaction um, and you know, because of your own sort of correspondence, I'm interested in, in whether you have something to add there or not. <laughs> um, I was drawn to the shape uh, first, and then uh, later work, much of later work. Um, after the Bangkok Biennale, I also went to stay with Samak in Chiang Mai um, briefly um, in 2019. Um, why I was drawn to the sheep and, uh, you know, much later work that why I was convinced. It's because um, I relate back to my earliest work uh, when I went out of my way uh, as a mural painter, uh, which I approached the Naripon series, and that was non-human. And the Naripon was being in the mythology um, the um, short-lived 
ชัดลาตามชัดลึกฟลุตอินทูอาเชฟออฟวิมเมนเกิร์ลส์ซูทูสปีแอนด์ฮัดชัดไลฟ์ออฟสิกสตีนเดย์ส์แอนด์อินเดอะนาราชิฟส์อิตวอสเทคินทูยูโนทูอาคุณทูเซอร์ฟดีไซน์ออฟพีเพิลคุณอาเชฟเดอะไลท์เมนต์ไลท์เดอะเซย์เดอะพีเพิลคุณเวนทูทายทูบีคัมมังก์ or something went to the forest and uh, um, and uh, was and found these trees so that was uh, so the story goes in in, in the mythology um, I um, uh, uh, in that narrative um, it was um, for myself to answer the unanswered question. Why this 12 years old girl, whom I know, was sold by her own parents, and she was not the only case in that uh, in that village where I um, conduct my mural painting. Um, I finished the work. I completed the work in 1996. Yet it has never gone away from. From my you know, at the back of my mind, when I saw the sheep, it came back to me, and I think maybe I have to maybe um, maybe I I look at Samak work and I look at Samak as myself 20 years earlier or 30 years, depend on how the gaps. <laughs> That's my answer. Okay. So um, actually, the thing that I, I actually want to talk dialogue with Patrick as well uh, for your question about well this point about even the topic about the agency a place that you quite raised the issue for today um, because sometimes I'm just rely like myself when I have to do a few projects at the same time like. Well, before this project and now this project that I work for my PhD about sex worker uh, in Northern Thailand. So one thing that I can realize later that is about border, you know, um, because Southern Thailand is about borders and also Northern Thailand. And what I would like actually is something that actually I really interest. That's why something that we talk with people the ones about, you know, you used to work at a refugee camp. like. Most of the place that I feel comfortable to well to study is the is the border, you know, because I can see a lot of agency, you know, as a place, you know, because it's something cannot be defined, something the place that cannot well to form and that really dynamics, and also when they come up to understand in terms of sexualities, you know, how it's been shaped again, how I wonder that as well because once if you're talking about you know. LGBT in Thailand, you know, except we consider it as a South, it seems like we are separating. But why, you know, border of South, related to the Malay world, this is something we can learn how this, you know, Muslims culture and how related border related to the sexualities. That's why I that I think it's very specific interest, like very interesting that I I focus and come to learn about the migrants. Uh, from Burma, come to you know, come to Thailand as a Chiang Mai, it's a city. Maybe you can sort of as a border come up, come with them and how to see they can shape. Not talking about queer as the term of Southern Thailand, but talking about masculinities that have been you know reshaped again when they come across and migrate. And this is actually I know I cannot really fix this is what to define them, but it's a way I understand, and I hope that. The art itself is still helping me a lot to in terms of process. That's that's what I that I I'm still you know <laughs> that's why I'm still enjoy and love to discuss and dialogue and practice in art. Do with it was a curator and most of the people that I I've been uh, associated with right now and yeah and also I think there's still like a question about in terms of homosexuality in Islam that I think is kind of my life question. This is like I'm really loving. Talk with people the one the way how to relate those most of the religions kind of right? because most of your work explain and then let me remind me what if I can to explain in terms of Islam because nobody really 
discuss about that much. You know, that's what I. That's why in the the project it was Hayton Sonkari that I brings object to talking as the Muslim belief that the objects will be alive, become alive in the other world to be a witness. This can be a witness for for the queer Muslim, you know, to be support them that they are as a Muslim person, not just talk as a queer person. So this is like I've been learned and trying to dialogue from what I have learned from Pipata One World as well. And this is something that I also getting to know more. And this is not a lot a lot of things. Like later I hope that at the end I can I can like if I can make the queer to be legitimate in Islam uh, society. This is not about being right or wrong, you know. So at least you've been, you know, they've been exist. <laughs> okay, this is like I, I what I uh, this is come up with some kind of question in my life as well. And and to dialogue and come to the work that I have a luck that I'm really lucky that to work with, with both of you and some other uh, project, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Um, oh, I've taken us way over time, uh, but uh, I think it's it's been well worth it, and we've been very lucky to to hear so much of your work, um, particularly at this stage as a work in in progress. Um, I would like to, on behalf of the series, thank very much um, Patrick for your talk last week, but also for um, proposing this uh, wonderful conversation. Um, thank you, Papuan and Samak, uh, for your preparation. For across different time zones and, uh, and across this, this distance. Um, it's one of the benefits perhaps of the current situation that we can join each other online like this. Um, thank you to our audience. Um, once again, uh, Patrick's talk will be online tomorrow, I believe. And this conversation as well is being recorded and we can share it uh, again on the series uh, uh, YouTube. So please look for that on the Power Institute. Thank you once again from Sydney. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.